and today I'm giving you my best garage sale tips and hacks to make the most money at your garage sale. So if you've been following me for a while, you know that my husband and I are doing Dave Ramsey's baby steps and trying to pay off our massive six-figure debt. So one of the things that we're doing to become debt free faster is downsizing from our 3,000 square foot house to a 1,000 square foot rental house and we've got a lot of stuff to sell. A garage sale can be a super fast way to make some extra cash, fund moving expenses, or to even get your little baby $1,000 emergency fund started. So let's go ahead and jump in to 8 tips to have a more profitable garage sale. Tip number one, pick a great day. Depending on your area, some garage sales might do way better on a Friday, maybe a Saturday, maybe Sunday, or maybe you should go for a Friday, Saturday, and Sunday sale if you have a lot to get rid of. Make sure to check with your city if you need a permit because some cities require a permit to hold a garage sale. Also, try to do your garage sale at the beginning or the middle of the month when people are more likely to get their paychecks and they are ready to shop. So if you have older children, you can definitely have them help out and put them to work. But if you have younger children, maybe ask a grandparent or a friend if they can help watch your kids because they're gonna be running all over the place and it's gonna be difficult if your kids are pulling things off the shelves and wondering why the heck you're selling their toys. Tip number two is make sure to maximize your profits. Don't spend an arm and a leg trying to get ready for your garage sale. So borrow as many tables as you can, hunt down old garage sales from the weekends prior and reuse those. And also check out the Dollar Tree for things like pre-marked sticker tags, uh, brightly colored labels so that you can label all of your items for less. These large for sale stickers and these little already marked stickers are only a dollar for a pack at the dollar store. Tip number three is to start early. Start gathering your items and pricing your items weeks before. If you try to do it all the night before or even a couple days before, you're gonna get really overwhelmed. We had a lot of stuff and we did a little bit every night. Also, make sure you get out there early the morning of the sale. We got out there at like 6 a.m. to finish setting up our garage sale and there were people pulling in at 6.30 ready to shop. So it was super stressful and we thought we were out there with plenty of time. So even the morning of, you need to get up early and you need to be out there setting everything up so when buyers arrive, you're not scrambling to try to price things. Early is always better with garage sales. Tip number four for improving your profits at your garage sale is to remember that presentation is everything. People don't want to feel like they're just buying a bunch of junk. So even though it might be junk to you, it could be somebody else's treasure. If you lay it out nice, put some like plastic tablecloths down or arrange everything so that people can see it. Make sure that you're cleaning all of your items so that they're nice and look as new as possible. And also make sure that you organize all of your items by category. So like home decor and kitchen and glassware, baby items, so that if someone's interested in one specific category, they can find more items increasing your sales. If you have large items like dressers, bookcases, or other furniture, try to put it out by the street because that will draw people in as they're passing the street or driving by your house. People are often looking for those large ticket items. And so if you can put them out where people see them first thing, it'll draw in more customers. Also, if you have a lot of toys or baby clothes, make sure that you're hanging them up or organizing them by size or laying all the toys out on a nice blanket so that everyone can see them without having to dig through. If they're all in a bin or a trash bag or a big box, then people are not going to really feel comfortable just sifting through your stuff. You'll make a lot more sales if it's out where everyone can see and the prices are clearly labeled. Tip number five to maximize your garage sale profits is to utilize Craigslist and Facebook to post large items. So typically when people are coming to garage sales, they want a quick, cheap deal. If you really wanna get more for things like refrigerators, bookcases, shelves, dressers, try posting them to Facebook Marketplace or Craigslist first. See if you get any buyers that way. You can always sell them later at your garage sale. And if they don't sell at your garage sale, you can continue to try to sell them online. Tip number six, 
Speaking of Craigslist and Facebook, make sure that you post about your garage sale so that you can get some free advertising. Of course, the signs are great for drawing people in from the street, but there are people that go online hunting for garage sales and plan it all out in advance. So sites like Craigslist and Facebook are great places to post that you're having a garage sale. You can do one post on about Wednesday before the weekend starts so that those early planners are seeing your sale. And then you can either update the post or make a new one the morning of. And we even did one like a last minute, hey, prices are dropping. We are motivated to get rid of this stuff at around like 11 a.m. Um, when things were winding down. And we got some more buyers that came right at the end of the day. So that was great. So utilize online sites like that. There's also one called G Seller, and I'll put a link below to that one. You can post your garage sale on there as well. Tip number seven is to pay attention to little details that will increase your sales. Having an extension cord that's ready to test appliances will increase buyer confidence. Also, we put out a little bin with some ice water because it's like 95 degrees right now in Texas. And uh, we put it out there for 50 cents a, a bottle and people bought water. Also, if you have fragile items, make sure to get some newspapers and some plastic grocery bags so that you can wrap up items. A lot of buyers might not want to buy breakable items because they are worried about breaking them in their car. So if you can increase their confidence by wrapping everything up nicely, buyers will be much more interested in paying for those items. And my final tip for maximizing your garage sale profits is to be a motivated seller. Do not let people walk away without buying something. If they want it, negotiate, be ready to accept offers because you don't want to bring this stuff back into your house. Let's face it. I hope these eight garage sale tips help you to have a profitable garage sale so that you can reach your financial goals a little bit faster. If you like this video, give it a big thumbs up and don't forget to hit subscribe and I will see you guys next week with more frugal living tips and debt payoff motivation.